Good morning, I'm Wendy Petrie and this is your Morning News Fix for Tuesday, the 12th of December. Te Papa is considering the look of its Treaty of Waitangi display in the wake of a protest which saw a part defaced. Images show a man abseiling, taking spray paint and an angle grinder to the display's English version. Twelve people were arrested in relation to the demonstration, with eight escorted outside and not charged. Protesters want the English version removed from being alongside Te Tiriti, as they believe it wrongly concedes sovereignty to the Crown. Museum spokesperson Kate Camp says Te Pap is a place to debate and have meaningful conversations. That's in our DNA to do that, but this is not the way, obviously, that we would hope people would engage with us. The government's being accused of attacking Te Rao Māori in a freshly lodged Waitangi tribunal claim. Tauranga Iwi Ngaiti Rangi is calling for an urgent hearing into policies, ensuring public services entities are primarily named and communicated in English. It warns this is a breach of the Treaty of Waitangi and is hoping the tribunal will advise the government to listen to Tangata Whenua. Back to my parents' time, really, when speaking Māori was not only uh, discouraged but seen as a handicap. An advocacy group for retailers says fair pay agreements would have created unnecessary complications for the sector. The government says it will repeal the legislation by Christmas, which makes it easier for workers in entire industries to demand better conditions. Retail New Zealand President Carolyn Young believes it will improve business confidence. She says that's important as the sector faces off with a difficult economy next year. The return of 90-day trials is being slammed as denying workers their right to justice in the workplace. The new government will pass legislation before Christmas, which allows employers to fire staff within their first 90 days without reason. Labour, while in coalition with New Zealand First, limited the trials to businesses with 19 or fewer employees. Council of Trade Unions President Richard Wagstaff believes this leaves workers vulnerable. We are aware of people who were feeling during their employment that they were unable to tell the employer some things they might not want to hear, join a union for their first 90 days of work. Extra police staff are heading to Whakatane to offer support amidst a homicide investigation. A 20-year-old man died after being taken to hospital on Sunday night. Police now believe it was gang-related. Detective Inspector Lou Warner says police won't tolerate any retaliatory attacks. Shoppers hoping to pick up summer stone fruit from the store can expect to pay more than usual. Grocer Faro Fresh says damage on Hawke's Bay peach, nectarine, apricot and cherry trees by Cyclone Gabrielle is impacting supply. Its produce manager says most of the early summer supply relies on the region and prices will inevitably be higher. To sport now, the hunt for a Super Rugby Commission chief executive has begun next week. Golfer Louis Oosthuizen has overcome a torn arm tendon to win the rain-delayed Alfred Dunhill Championship in South Africa, his first victory in five years. Five-time Olympic champion swimmer Emma McKeon's Paris preparations are under threat due to a torn armpit muscle. And cricketer Joffrey Archer has stepped up with his recovery from a recurring elbow injury by playing for his old school team in Barbados without telling anyone in the England setup. I'm Wendy Petrie. That's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the News Talk ZB newsroom.